Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. Now, this is the US dollar index, the weekly chart from netdania.com. You can click on the link below. And it's overlaid over the silver chart, uh, spot US dollar. So the reason I'm bringing up this chart, we're going to talk about the trade deficit and the value of the dollar and what that means. But it's very interesting when we look at this chart. A lot of people talk about the price of silver in 2003 back here. And uh, that was really the bottom. Um, people are doing analysis right now to try to determine how cheap silver is relatively. And uh, I think it was Dave Kranzler. Uh, he had a guest on and they, they guesstimated that it was roughly what it was back in 2003. But you can see the kind of extreme difference we had with the dollar and silver. And you can see it was when that huge dollar decline happened. Uh, that kind of pointed the way to the beginning of the silver rally. It, the initial, you know, uh, surge up was right here and then then we really started going um, now you can see currently where we're at here we've got a big divergence nothing like this but big relatively to where we've been in the recent past and you can see how they've crossed over so you've got a strong dollar it can buy a lot and you've got a, a weak silver price so I'm convinced I believe that silver right now is as cheap uh, purchasing power parity wise we'll say as it was in 2003 so uh, I, I don't see how you can go wrong stacking silver at this price now we're going to look at the trade deficit and we're also going to look at um, the coin that we covered uh, from Australia but I wanted to look at a couple stories here real quick first of all want to look at this Greece story um, this is just craziness that that the Greeks are trying to um, say that the the Germans owe them money from the Nazi occupation. I mean, we're talking 70 er to 80 years ago. They're going back to that. Let's read a little bit of this. Uh, having demanded Euro 278.7 billion from Germany for World War II reparations, which was quickly eschewed by Germany, Greece has decided to up the ante as Keep Talking Greece reports. Greek Defense Ministry has published a video with rare footage from the occupation of Greece by the Nazis during, the world, during world War II. Among others, the footage shows children suffering from malnutrition and emaciated adults, victims of the Great Famine during the Nazi occupation. The video is designed to provide context for the huge claim and the video voice overstates that enforced loans by the Nazis was to blame for the mass starvation of estimated 300,000 people in Athens alone. This is almost like uh, the reparations for uh, people living today for slavery or something. I mean, this is just silly. And, you know, it's it's never going to happen. But that that's the desperation that the Greek communists are. Uh, that's the stage they're at. And, of course, they're cozying up to Putin. I, I don't know what's going to become of it. Um, it's a crazier situation by the day. It's going to be exciting. But uh, let's get over to the main story I want to talk about here. And then we're going to go and look at a coin and some coins that are related to this. So I wanted to take you to this Fred graph. And I got this from the Federal Reserve site this is the st louis fed you can pull up any number of graphs there this one is actually uh the discontinued series and uh that that's well the balance on current account the discon the discontinued series doesn't show it's very convenient the way they discontinue series but uh this is the current trade deficit and you can see that it's I, and i don't think this is accurate but stated it's around negative uh, 400 billion dollars and it's been that way you can see uh, it goes way back but you can see it was as high as negative 800 billion in 2006 and it's just steadily bleeding 400 billion dollars now what does that really mean what that means is that 
a country that's running a trade deficit is a country that is importing more than they're exporting. And that, that's what this figure means. So the United States is importing $400 billion worth of goods every year more than we are exporting, which means that we have to borrow the money to pay for it. And you would think, again, with this chart here, let's just pull up the dollar alone so you can see um, how dramatic that move is. Now, an, a rally in the currency, what that means is that the dollar is strengthening. That means that it, goods that we buy from foreigners become cheaper and goods that we sell to foreigners become more expensive. Now, if you think about this, a rally like this in the dollar is going to have a very large impact on the trade deficit. Now, this rally isn't really that old. It started, you can see, um, in the fall, and it's really, it's really only a six-month-old rally. So we wouldn't really expect to see the figures, uh, trade deficit figures that this is causing to come in yet. We'll see those in six months or so. But if you think about it just common sense wise, you can see this is going to have a very large impact on the trade deficit. So think about this. The value of the dollar has increased 25% from 80 to 100 um, in this time frame. That means that goods that the that American citizens buy are 20% cheaper that they buy from overseas. And that also means that goods that we export to foreigners are 20% more expensive. So will we see a 20% change in the trade deficit? I don't know. We're going to see a change in the trade deficit. Now, normally under a rational system such as what we had in the past, some type of international gold standard. The way these things work is that a country that is running a continual trade deficit, what they will see is a continual decline in their currency. The currency is going to decline to compensate for the trade deficit. That's how things balance. Now, in the past with an international gold standard, what would happen is that a country that is constantly running a trade deficit would be constantly bleeding gold and they they continue to lose their gold year after year after year until they were out of gold and once they're out of gold then the only alternative they have at that point is to begin exporting more than they import and and that causes a kind of fiscal and uh, monetary restraint that is no longer, you can see the mechanism is completely broken because we have a trade deficit that is continuing and a currency that is rallying. That can only happen in a completely broken system. And of course, this system isn't going to go on. We don't know when the reset is going to occur. Everybody's money is on September. So probably it's not gonna happen in September. Uh, my guess would be maybe December. But since so many people are banking on September, I, I would guess it won't be September. But either way, there is going to be a tremendous reckoning because we have a currency that is appreciating and we have a continual trade deficit. Now, I wanted to segue into how that impacts our buying of silver. Now, you remember that I covered that Chinese lunar horse coin that was over here at KJC. Now, interestingly enough, when you pull up the lunar series, it's kind of strange because uh, the category here is Perth Mint Silver Lunar Bullion. But you can remember that I recommended the one I wanted to buy so badly because it was 28 bucks um, US, 28 bucks US for that one ounce horse. And that was an incredible deal. Somebody snapped it up because it's not here anymore. But it's interestingly enough replaced with this one ounce 2014 Royal Mint UK year of the horse. So uh, this, is, this is important because as most of the members are in the US, that means you're able to buy some of these foreign bullion coins for an amazing price. Now, 
Uh, the one that was here before, the Perth Lunar, was I think it was 37 at translated. That's 37 Australian dollar translated into US dollar 28, something like that. This one here is the British one. So let's look at this British coin. And uh, really, I'm going to just ask for your opinion. Uh, my initial gut instinct is that this really isn't going to be a great collector coin. But again, at the same time, there's only, let's see, there's only about 200 of these, 194. And as I look at the 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 design on this one it, it grows on me a little bit you can see we have that chinese symbol again i've said many many times uh, almost like a broken record you know it's going to be the century of the chinese you want to sell something to the chinese very interesting that the british are giving that head nod to the chinese so the coin is very cheap relatively speaking 21 dollars uh, about four or five dollars above spot, maybe a buck and a half, two over the regular bullion coins. So it might be a deal. Um, I'm going to throw this one out to the members. What do you think of this coin? Do you think this coin is going to perform like the Perth coins? Uh, will it perform better? Will it perform worse? Uh, what do you think about this coin? I really can't make up my mind. My initial reaction is negative, but then I'm starting to warm up to the coin and I really want to know what you think. So somebody out there, hopefully one of the members, maybe you can come and fess up, uh, manage to pick up those 300 and something one ounce uh, lunar coins uh, from KJC and uh, got them for 28 bucks. I, I really don't think the person who got those uh, can lose. I wish I would have been the one that picked them up, but I just wasn't in a position at the time. So let me know, what do you think about this and how is the trade deficit? going to go in the future. Let me know and we'll talk to you next time.